Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Math with Dr. War. Today's lesson is for the college students and we're going to be rationalizing the denominators. Let's begin. Now, rationalizing the denominator is a very simple concept. So we're going to start off first by looking when you only have one term in the denominator. This is the easiest one. So I have 2 over the square root of 3. So when we want to rationalize the denominator, which means get rid of the square root symbol in the denominator, we look to see if we have any radicals in the denominator. And I'll be going back and forth saying radical and square root, so please excuse me. So we look to see if we have any radicals in the denominator, and you're going to take that radical, and for me it's uh, radical 3. You're going to take that, and you're going to multiply the denominator and the numerator. So my numerator now becomes 2 square root 3, and here's a little trick. Well, it's not a trick. Radical 3 times radical 3 is itself. So basically, radical 3 times radical 3 is like your taking radical 3 and multiplying it by itself twice and square and square root are like the opposite of each other so what happens is the square cancels the square root and you're just left with 3 so whenever you have a radical multiplying itself the radical sign just focus on one the radical sign will disappear and just leave you with what's inside. So you don't have to write this because this is what I saw my students doing last semester and it drove me nuts. They would write two square root three over and then they'll go square root three times square root three is square root nine and then the square root of nine is three. And they could have skipped that step if they understood that radical three times radical three is basically three, that the square root sign will disappear. So I have 15 over the square root of 5, and I need to rationalize. So I look to see what radical is in my denominator. It's radical 5, so I'm going to take that, and I'm going to multiply my denominator and my numerator. My numerator becomes 15 radical 5 over, and then these two, when they multiply each other, um, you're just going to get 5. So again, just focus on one of them. Like if you focus on this one, the radical sign would disappear, leaving you with just 5. Now you always have to check to see if you can simplify. 15 divided by 5 is 3, so your answer is 3 radical 5. I have 6 over 2 radical 7. Again, we need to rationalize. Remember, you only take the radical, so I'm not even going to touch the 2. Remember, we're rationalizing the denominator. We need to remove the radical, so radical 7 is going to multiply my numerator and my denominator over 2. And remember this, when you multiply, will give you 7. I get 6 radical 7 over 2 times 7 is 14. And when I divide each of them by 2, I get 3 radical 7 over 7. 8 over 3 radical 2, again, we want to rationalize Who's our radical in the denominator? That's what you're going to multiply by. Radical 2, radical 2. The numerator becomes 8 radical 2 over 3. And remember this just becomes 2. The radical sign disappears. So this is 8 radical 2 over 3 times 2 is 6. 8 and 6 are divisible by 2. And when I divide each of these by 2, I get 4 radical 2 over 3. So remember when you have a single term in the denominator and you need to rationalize, look into the denominator, and whatever radical is in that denominator, you're going to use that to multiply your numerator and denominator. Now suppose you have two terms in the denominator and one is a radical. This is when we multiply by the conjugate. So I have 2 over 5 minus radical 2. I have to multiply by the conjugate. And your conjugate is simply, you're going to keep your first term. This is subtraction. So you're going to write addition. And we're going to keep the second term. So notice your conjugate is I'm rewriting my denominator. But I'm only changing the sign in the middle. I am changing the operator in the middle to the opposite. So the original was 5 minus square root 2, and the conjugate is 5 plus square root 2. 
Notice this 5 didn't become a minus 5. You only change the sign in the middle. And your conjugate, you're going to also multiply the numerator, just like what we did before when we had a single term. Now the top portion, which is your numerator, is 2 times 5 plus radical 2. Now your denominator, I'm not going to go through that long multiplication like we were back in polynomials. So I'm going to show you a little shortcut. So because you have to multiply your conjugate, we're going to square 5. So 5 squared is 25. Now always remember, when you multiply a negative times a positive, it is a negative. This was very difficult for my students last semester. A lot of them would not put a subtraction sign in the middle of their denominator. They kept putting a plus sign. Always remember a negative times a positive is a negative. In your denominator, the operator should always be a subtraction. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to square, square root 2. And remember, that's like saying square root 2 is multiplying itself. So guess what's going to happen? The square root symbol is going to disappear and you're just going to be left with 2. Because remember, square root 2, all squared, the square cancels the square root and leave you with what's inside the radical sign. So this becomes 2 times 5 plus square root 2 over and 25 minus 2 is 23. Now some professors will take this as an answer. If a student gave this to me, it will be fine. However, there are some professors who would want you to distribute. So if I distribute the 2 inside the parentheses, 2 times 5 is 10 plus and then 2 times radical 2 is 2 radical 2 and your denominator is just 23. Okay, let's try this again. We have 5 over negative 4 plus square root of 5. We need to multiply by the conjugate. So I keep my first term. I change my sign to the opposite. So since that is a plus, this will be a minus and I keep my second term. Notice you're not changing the first term or the second term. You're just changing the operator in the middle to the opposite. And this will also multiply your numerator. So the numerator is easy. This will be 5 times negative 4 minus radical 5. And the denominator, remember what I said, a little shortcut. Negative 4 squared is 16. Remember the sign in the middle will always be a negative because a positive times a negative is a negative. And here I'm going to square. The square cancels the square root, so this will give me 5. So I have 5 times negative 4 minus radical 5. And 16 minus 5 is 11. Again, some people want you to distribute. So this would be negative 20 minus 5 radical 5 over 11. Okay, the last two. I have 3 over radical 2 plus radical 5. We need to multiply by the conjugate. So remember, I keep my first term. This is a plus, so it will be a subtract. Okay, and I keep my second term. So my conjugate is radical 2 minus radical 5. My numerator is 3 times radical 2 minus radical 5 over. Okay, so remember we square this, which means the square cancels the square root. So this is just 2. A positive times a negative is a negative. Okay, remember square this section. The square cancels the square root, so you just have 5. This is 3 times square root 2 minus square root 5 over 2 minus 5, negative 3. I notice these will cancel each other out, leaving me with a negative, which is multiplying the square root 2 minus the square root 5. And if you distribute, you get negative square root 2 plus square root 5. Please be careful with your signs. And um, some students like to rewrite this because they don't like negatives leading. So some people might rewrite this as radical 5 minus radical 2. But all three of these are correct. 3 over 3 minus 2 radical 3. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. So remember, you keep the first. Change that to the opposite. So that will be plus And write the second term. So remember, the only thing we're changing is the sign in the middle. That's our conjugate. 
So the top portion becomes 3 times 3 plus 2 square root 3 over, okay, remember we square this, 3 squared is 9, remember a negative times a positive is a negative, and this one you have to be careful. So you have 2 square root 3 that you have to square. Now I'm going to break this up, you're squaring the 2, and you're squaring the radical 3. Now when you square 2, you get 4. Now remember, when you square the radical 3, the square cancels the square root, so that's just 3. And then 4 times 3 is 12. Be careful. Um, each semester, I see students get some horrible answers. Actually, they tell me it's 36 because when they square this, they're like, oh, 2 squared is 4 and, and 3 squared is 9 and 9 times 4 is 36. Please remember, you square, square them individually. When you square 2, you get 4, and when you square the square root of 3, you just get 3. And 4 times 3 is 12. This becomes 3 times 3 plus 2 square root 3 over negative 3. These two cancel each other out, leaving you with a negative, and you have 3 plus 2 square root 3. And if we distribute, negative 3 minus 2 square root 3. These uh, rationalization of the denominator is going to be very helpful when you get to the trick section of your course. Because when you get to those triangles, you're going to get radicals in the denominator and you're going to have to rationalize. Your professor will want you to rationalize. In my class, I told my students when they got to the trig and the triangles, it says if you have a radical in the denominator, do not give that to me you need to rationalize. So this is a very important topic. You must be able to rationalize the denominator. Okay, here this one, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to, it looks very nasty, but it is doable. So we have radical A plus radical B over two radical A plus five radical B. Again, you're gonna multiply by the conjugate. So we keep our first term as two radical A, we change our addition to subtraction and we keep our five radical B. That is our conjugate, which is going to also multiply our numerator. So the top portion is radical A plus radical B times two radical A minus five radical B. The denominator is the easy portion. Uh, remember we're squaring this. So let's go over here. So you have two square root A which you're squaring. So two is being squared and radical A is being squared. Now, if you square two, you get four and the square cancels the square root, so that's four A. Remember, a positive times a negative is a negative. In the denominator, you should always have a subtraction sign, never an addition. Now we need to square five radical B, all squared. If you broke that up, you're squaring five by itself and the radical B you're also squaring. Five squared is 25. And remember the square cancels the square root symbol and you have 25B. Now the nasty part is this numerator. Oh my God. Okay, so this is like going back to multiplying binomials. So I like to use the distribution method. So this is radical A, which is multiplying two radical A minus five radical B, and then positive radical B is multiplying two radical A minus five radical B. So radical A times two radical A is two radical A radical A, which is just two A because these two radicals cancel themselves out and this leave you with A minus radical A times five radical b. Now these can't really multiply so this will be negative 5 and instead of having radical a radical b I'm just going to write one sign and put a b on the inside. So here I have radical b multiplying to radical a so that will be plus radical b multiplying to radical a and that can't really multiply so I'll just put the plus the 2 is first and then one radical sign and just put a b I'm just going to write in alphabetical order, it makes your life easier. And then here, minus, so you have radical B times in five radical B. So basically what this is, is going to be minus five, and radical B times radical B is just B. 
notice that these two terms are alike and I can combine them. So this will be 2a. Now, when you're combining, you're just combining the coefficients in the front. So negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So this will be negative 3 radical ab minus 5b. So my numerator after all of that is 2a minus 3 radical ab minus 5b. And all of that is over 4a minus 25b. And please, folks, you can't subtract this. These are a's and these are b's. You can't subtract. You can't do anything. And the same thing with the top. You got a 2a, you got a negative 5b, and then you have a negative 3 radical ab. This is your answer. As awful as it looks, this is your answer. I hope this has been helpful. Again, rationalizing the denominator is going to be needed when you get to trig. So please make sure that you can rationalize the denominator with a single term or two terms. I hope this has been helpful. Please share, like, and subscribe. Okay, until my next video, have a great day.